All right, and we're back here with uh, video four of building and designing beautiful websites from scratch. Uh, today we'll talk about CSS. We'll start to think about layout and we'll start to actually lay out our sample website onto a grid. Um, so just uh, to run through the agenda, we're going to quickly review CSS. We kind of quickly covered it in the, the end of the last video and I want to reinforce some of the syntax and ideas of CSS. I want to again reinforce the concepts of IDs and classes in HTML, talk about three CSS layout options, uh, and then uh, do a really quick intro into gridding um, and actually laying out our sample website onto a grid. Um, so let's get rolling. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to quickly talk about um, CSS syntax again. Uh, and so just to kind of point out, this comes from W3Schools, just to kind of point out the different um, components or syntax of CSS, we've got our selector. This is the thing that we're selecting, the thing that we want to style or change. In this case, in this example, H1. We've got our declaration. Uh, so really two main things, our selector and our declaration. Within the declaration, we've got two things. We have properties. So what property of the selected item do we want to change and then we have a value what do we actually want to change it to so for example I want to change the color that's the property of our h1 tag to blue that's the value here's another example I want to change the font size that's a property to a specific size 12 pixels okay and you can put as many uh, properties and values, you can attach as many declarations or properties and values to a selector as you want. Um, so for example, this only has two changes, we could add 10 more if we wanted to. And we divide declarations using a semicolon. Quickly, uh, I want to run through IDs and classes again. So just as a reminder, IDs and classes are ways to uniquely identify HTML tags. So again, HTML tags are finite, meaning there's a specific set number of tags, and if we want to then make more nuanced design changes to particular HTML tags, we need to add some uniqueness to them. And to, to wait, one way to do that, or two ways to do that really, are either attaching ID to an HTML element or a class. Um, I didn't really differentiate between the two in the last video, so I'll do that here for you now. IDs are wholly unique in that they can only occur one time on an HTML page. So for example, you might use an ID if you have one specific type of picture uh, image uh, that you have and it will never occur again on the entire website. Um, classes are different in that you can use them multiple times. The way I, uh, I sort of differentiate them or a trick I use is I think of them as classes of students. Stud there's lots of students in a particular class. Um, and so you can use classes more than one time. So we can attach this multiple times to HTML elements. Um, as a general rule of thumb, if you just make everything a class, you're pretty safe. Um, I know people uh, that are more advanced in web design are probably cringing at that, but I just kind of uh, operate under that sort of uh, underlying uh, assumption. Just use classes and you, you're pretty much safe. Now, the next thing, so kind of what we did in the last video is we made some really simple changes, right? We changed font size, font color, things like that. The next real big component of CSS is layout, right? So layout, when we talk about layout, we're talking about how are the different elements on the page arranged, both vertically and horizontally, okay? Um, so back in the day when, when web design was just getting started in the 90s, um, people used to lay out websites and tables, right? So just like you might in a Microsoft Word document, right? You want three columns, you make a three column table. Um, as you can imagine, that's really not sustainable in particular because of mobile devices, but also it's just not a flexible way to lay things out. Um, and so tables are sort of a big no-no. So don't use tables uh, to lay out your websites. 
Um, the second option is using uh, what is called a CSS float. And so you can float div elements, divider elements, um, either left or right. Um, and you can sort of move elements around the page that way. That's Floating is really what Bootstrap, if you've ever heard of Bootstrap before, is really built on. Um, and is, floating is really what we'll focus on and use primarily for the purposes of this tutorial. Um, and then the third way is what's called Flexbox. Um, Flexbox is, Flexbox is um, a, a newer technology and really um, something that I'll probably do a video on here soon, um, but is a little harder to grasp. But once you do grasp it, it's much more um, powerful than floating. Um, we won't talk too much about Flexbox, but um, it's a really neat technology that we'll talk about maybe sometime in the future. Okay, so layouts. One way to lay things out, um, and I think a really sort of best practice to lay things out is on a grid. So grids help us lay out things um, by setting specific widths to specific elements. Um, they're usually divided into 12 equal columns. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, and websites are chopped up into rows and columns. So let me just walk you through. Um, there's this website uh, blog post that I found um, by Revelation Concept, and it's a tutorial about designing a custom page template. Um, but I think what was cooler was this uh, idea of wireframing, and it walks you through sort of the process of wireframing. And what I thought was really neat is that it had these screenshots. So um, I appreciate Revelation Concept for sharing this with everyone. Um, so basically what you're looking at here is a 12 column grid. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Um, so one column, uh, so we've got 12 columns from, from pink to pink here. Um, so this is sort of step one is you've got a blank grid. Step two is you start to think about the different elements on your website. So here's a header that seems to span all 12 columns. Here's another header, or I mean, here's an animation that they want to put in that will also span all 12 columns. Now, now what they're doing is there's more elements that have different widths. Um, so right now, this is three equal widths, three columns of equal width. And if we think about, when we think about gridding, we think about how many columns does it span? So CTA one here spans one, two, three, four columns. CTA two spans one, two, three, four columns. CTA three also spans one, two, three, four. So again, they add up to 12, four plus four plus four, um, and they're equal width. So you can see that this row has three columns um, of four. This row also has three columns, but they're diff they're not equal width. So the first one is half the half the screen, so it spans six columns, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then um, the other two columns uh, span the other half. So we divide six by two, or half of six is three, so one, two, three for last tweet, and one, two, three for email form. So again, when we're thinking about when we're thinking about laying things out on a grid, what we're doing is we're uh, chopping up all of the content first in rows and then in columns. So this is one row. It's got three columns in it. This is another row that's got three columns in it. Um, so that's a really important concept to understand. And then they have some more, um, they've got some more, uh, screenshots that show sort of the next steps. Um, so again, if you look at this entire site now, sort of laid out, it's one row, that's a header. Row two is this animation slash CTA thing. Row three is three columns equal width. And row four is three columns different widths. So we've got four rows here of content. 
and this is what it looks like with actual content in it. Right, so I think it's just a really neat example to show you starting with just a blank grid and then proceeding through chopping up the, con we uh, chopping up the content into rows and columns what it actually would look like in the end. Okay. Okay, so now that we kind of have a shared understanding of how the grid works, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to recreate this site. It's a, a site that I've been working on for a client. It's a pretty rough site, but it still, I think, illustrates what we're trying to get across here, and that's um, how to lay out and design things on a grid. Uh, and so we'll just kind of recreate this site. We've got our nav bar here at the top. We've got um, a hero image, and then we've got a fairly straightforward layout. Right, we've got two columns here, two columns here in this row, two columns here in this row, two columns here in this row, and then four columns here in the footer. So if I were to uh, actually lay this out or wireframe this, um, I might use a tool called uh, wireframe.cc. It's a really helpful tool. It's an easy drag and drop deal. Um, and if we wanted to sort of wireframe this site, um, we might start with the hero image at the top. Um, we'll click image there. So that's our hero image. Um, and then if we move down to the next section, uh, we've got two columns here, but they're sort of like centered. They're sort of centered here. Um, so if we think about it, this is, it looks like it spans three columns and three columns. Right, so all together, these two span six columns each. Right, so if we um, wanted to design that, we might design one section that spans three columns, and that's going to be some text, and another section that spans another three columns, And that's also going to be some text. This is actually more like a headline. Uh, I don't know if we can change that. I guess we can't. Um, but you can kind of see it's, they're both three columns each, but they're offset, right? So there's three columns of space on the right and three columns of space on the left. That'll be important as we uh, actually try to implement our design. Uh, next we see and I won't lay out the whole site, but you'll kind of get the idea. Next, we see these alternating sections um, of some text in an image, right? And it looks like these are about 50-50, so we'll just kind of leave it at that for now. Um, but these are not offset by a whole lot, and actually this, uh, this image runs all the way to the edge. So we'll go... If it's 50% of our screen, we know that's six out of a 12 column grid. So if we say our image is here, and we say our text is here, okay? And the text is a bit smaller, and there's some margins and things like that. Um, but no need to actually mess around too much with it. Because I just want to illustrate sort of how the grid works. And then uh, I'm not going to go through all of the alternating. They're essentially the same layout, right? So we're going 50, 50, six, spanning six columns and six columns. And then our footer, we've got, and in our footer, we've got four columns. And so at the very least, we would need. Um, if we wanted them to span all the way across, we would have these each would span three, right? So three times four is 12, so that would span all the way across. Um, in this case, it looks like these are spanning two. So if we said these are spanning two, that would go eight across, and that would leave four on the outsides, right? So um, if we say this is our footer section here, some text, so that's two. Uh, how do we get the text? Two, two, and two. So 
So we've got, again, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but we're kind of doing this on the fly. Um, we've got our four columns that sort of match our footer here, um, but they're offset by two columns, right? So they're offset. There's two columns on the right here and two columns on the left here. Um, but the important thing is, is we're understanding that each of these elements, these HTML elements, spans a certain number of columns. And that word spans is important, right? So again, these are spanning three and three. This is spanning six and six. And these are spanning two each. Two, 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 and two. So you can kind of see how we've got a variety of widths of columns going on um, that sort of make up this particular website. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of build this site together. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, we're going to use Bootstrap uh, for primarily for um, our grid because Bootstrap has a great 12 column grid built into it. Um, and so uh, to do that, um, you'll open the provided uh, HTML file and let me just get to that folder. I think it's in my desktop. Um, so I'm going to open my HTML and my style.css in Sublime Text. You can use whatever text editor you're using. And you'll notice that it's literally just a blank, um, it's just a blank HTML file. So that'll, you're just going to follow along with me here. Um, <coughs> so the first thing we'll do um, and essentially, let me just really quickly explain what Bootstrap is. Bootstrap is a CSS and JavaScript library. Um, and so it has a lot of code associated with it already, um, a lot of built-in code. And one of the built-in, so if we look at, if we actually looked at the Bootstrap CSS file, this is what it would look like. Uh, just kind of gives you a headache. Um, so I'm not, we're not going to look at all of that. Um, but it has a lot of CSS built into the framework. Um, and so what's helpful with CSS, uh, with Bootstrap, it's got all of this built-in stuff, including a built-in grid. Um, and, and it uses the 12 column grid. So I'll show you how to use that. Um, we're not gonna use all that much Bootstrap styling um, other than the grid. Um, so to get started, you'll go to uh, this link, which I'll put in the video. Um, but it's the Get Started CDN page, and you're, we're just going to copy the CSS. Uh, we're going to copy the CSS link. We're going to go into our HTML file, and we're going to paste it into our HTML file. Okay, so this just links to that huge CSS file that I showed you here. That's all that this is doing, okay? Uh, it doesn't really do anything uh, special other than give you some default styles and give you access to a bunch of already written code. So again, the reason why we would want to use Bootstrap is that it has code that's written, so we're not just uh, reinventing the wheel. We're just using already created code. Um, we're going to also copy uh, the JavaScript libra libraries. Um, and so I'm going to click Copy here. And right at the bottom of your, um, right at the bottom after uh, the body closes, I'm just going to copy these scripts. Okay, so I'm just copying and pasting these scripts. So again, these aren't doing anything magical. Again, they're all they're doing is they're providing you access to these built-in uh, libraries that people have coded so that you don't have to code it from scratch, right? So right now we have Bootstrap and we're all set up. One thing you'll notice, like if I just put an H1 tag, you'll notice um, this is a heading. Um, and I'll just do this uh, just to kind of show you. You'll notice that it's got some default stylings. Like this is a default bootstrap font that it's using. Um, but other than that, other than the grid, we won't use much, uh, much from the bootstrap framework. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, just coding this thing up in HTML. Um, so we'll start with the very top, um, and and what we'll do is um, all we have is our body tag right now. Uh, so inside of our body tag, we're going to start with a header tag. 
And in the header tag, we're going to have a navigation bar. So we'll have a nav tag, open and close it. Um, and in our nav, we'll have, just like any other nav that we've done, we'll have a unordered list. Okay, so um, navs are just lists of links. So we'll do uh, an anchor tag. Um, the hypertext reference will just set to pound, which means it just goes nowhere. Um, it just goes nowhere uh, when we uh, click it, okay? Uh, and so what, what we'll do then is we'll just copy and paste this series of list tags. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just gonna do that six times. Three, four, five, six. Okay, so we've got our nav bar in place. We have to actually probably need the words in it, right? So um, I'm not gonna cop, I'm just gonna do menu one, menu two, menu three, menu four, menu five, and menu six. Okay, so all we've done so far is we've created this navigation bar that links to nothing, right? It's just a, um, a dummy navigation bar. So if we refresh, we should be able to see our navigation bar um, with our menus that link to nothing, okay? Uh, the next thing we'll do is we will um, add this a placeholder at least for the icon. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, uh, I am going to link to the icon, or the logo, I'm sorry. Uh, and I have a folder and in the zip file that you'll download, there'll be a folder called images. So we're gonna go images slash Uh, logo dash placeholder logo dash placeholder and then we got to see what kind of file is this it's a jpeg file so we'll do dot jpg and then always have an alternate tag to describe what the actual image is so if we refresh now we've got a logo and we've got a navigation bar and it's ginormous okay um we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to leave our header as it is, okay? Um, the next thing we're going to do is um, we need to add this little tagline, delivering e-learning content for the future. Uh, so that'll go, let's say, um, we're going to remove that from the header section, and we're going to call this... Um, hero. So this section, this big thing, we'll call the hero section. Um, and we're going to open a div and we're going to give it a class called hero. So just as a reminder, we can call this anything we want, but we probably want to call it something memorable. Um, so we'll call it hero. And so in this case, we'll uh, we'll just call it div class hero. Uh, so in this section, we're going to have a background image. And we'll do that in CSS, so I'm not going to mess with that for now. Um, but we're going to have this tagline. Um, so I'm just going to write interesting tagline goes here. I'm going to wrap that in an h1 tag. And then we'll do... This is just a link, learn how we achieve this. So sort of call to action. We're gonna link that to, again, the pound sign. Um, just create a dead link. And we'll say call to action. Okay, and we'll close our link tag there. Okay, so all we're doing is we're creating various sections of the website that we will lay out, okay? Um, 
So let's take a look at what we got so far. We've got our logo, we've got our nav bar, and then we have our interesting tagline. Um, and then let's put the next section in. Okay, so we're gonna not really do much with the grid in this top section. And we're gonna start with the grid here in this second section here. So what we'll do is, since our hero ends right here, we're gonna create a new row for this um, bit of text, right? So we're gonna create a row, a new row here that has text on the left and text on the right, and each of those bits of text span three columns each, just to remind us. So as we're laying out, what we'll do is we will create a row. So rows are a built-in rows are a built-in class that Bootstrap provides. So basically all this does is it signifies we're creating a new row. It's almost like a line break um, in Microsoft Word or something like that. So we'll create a row, which is this row. And inside this row, we want two columns that span three, um, three columns each, the width of three columns each, right? Um, so we'll go, we'll use a class, a bootstrap class called column three, okay? And then we'll use another class called column three. And we'll use, we'll take this little tagline. We'll say that's an H2 and we'll say enabling property management companies to train smarter, not harder. And on this side, we'll just put a bunch of dummy text. So we'll just steal some of this lorem ipsum text. And we'll put that in a paragraph tag. Okay. So just to reiterate what we've done, we've got a row. And inside that row, we've got two columns. Um, one that spans three and another that spans three. So we're sort of matching our layout here, okay? So if we look and we refresh, we'll notice this row actually is working, right? It's spanning three and spanning three. The problem though is, um, the problem in this case though is uh, we want it to be offset by three, right? So we want, to move these two columns, three columns over, right? So to do that, what we can do is, on this class, Bootstrap provides a, an, offset, uh, an offset class. Um, and let me pull up the Bootstrap grid to show you. And let's look for offset. So what this means is, we can actually offset um, or put just have, have a blank space um, however many columns wide we want it. Um, and to just also kind of show you, um, this MD uh, allows you, I don't want to get too far into it, but it allows you to make your website automatically responsive in a lot of ways. Um, and it's, so it's setting the breakpoint, the, uh, it's setting the website to have a medium breakpoint. Um, so I don't want to get too far into that, but uh, if we add the MD, we can have, uh, we can make our websites more responsive. So we'll add, our, add the MD to these two threes, call MD three, call MD three. Um, and what we want to do then is we want to offset by three. So we can do, we can add a space after call MD3 and we can just say offset MD3. And again, this is already built in code that the people at Bootstrap wrote 
to basically tell your column here to get pushed over three columns. Okay, so it's three columns wide and push it over three columns. So if we um, refresh, that pushes over three columns. And it also makes this three columns wide and this three columns wide. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. So if we move on to the next part, we know that we want this to be six columns and six columns, right? Some text and an image. So we're just going to repeat the same thing, right? We're going to create a row, right? So we're going to create a row. And I like to comment out anytime I create a row, if you do this open bracket, exclamation point, dash, dash, this is what's called a comment. You'll notice that it doesn't light up in color. Um, it's just to signify where the row opens and closes. Um, because when we have a lot of um, embedded elements inside of this row, it can get confusing uh, to keep track of where one thing opens and one thing closes, right? So what we're going to do now is inside of this row, we need two columns, right? So we'll go div class call md6, right? And we're just going to copy that and do it twice. So we need six on one side and six on the other side. And so we'll do an image for this right side here. So image source uh, images slash image, let me see, image one dot JPG. And again, an alt text. So people studying. So that just describes the photo. Um, and then on our left row here, we want some text. So we have an H2, and we'll say heading goes here. We have some paragraph text, and we'll go to our lorem ipsum generator. So if you go to lipsum.com, lipsum.com, you can generate some dummy text. And so I'll just grab a few sentences, copy it, paste it in as placeholder. And then we have a call to action link. So we'll go a href. And again, we're going to just stub it out with a pound sign. And we'll go call to action. Okay, so right now, again, just to reiterate what we did, we created a row, and inside that row, there's two columns, one that spans six and one that spans six. So half of this page and half of the page, okay? Um, so let's see what that looks like. So we have this image that goes half the page, and we have this heading, uh, or this bit of text that goes the other half of the page. Okay, you'll notice that the image, because we haven't put any CSS rules on this image, it's a gigantic image. And so it's like overflowing past the, um, past the margins. We're, we're gonna have to fix that eventually. Um, so let's go ahead and fix that. So what we'll do is we want to be able to select this image. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to add a class to it. Because I don't want to I don't want to make this change on every image in the website um, in our style sheet. But I want to make it only to uh, a, a certain kind of image or a certain class of image. Um, and so the class of image that I'm going to use this on is I'm going to call, um, we'll call this full width. Okay, so I added a class to this image and I'm going to call it full width. So now in our CSS file, we'll jump over there. What we're going to do is we're just going to set the width 
to 100%. So basically what we'll say is, since its parent width is already defined by this bootstrap class call MD6, if we set the width to 100%, it should confine to this 100% of space. So let's do that. Oops. Do that. And that worked, right? Confined to 100% of the space. It's not overflowing anymore. It's excellent. All right. So the next thing we'll do is um, let's style up. Let's do one more row and then we'll style up what we have so far and then we'll be we'll save the rest for the next video. Um, so we'll do one more row. So again, back to our original mock-up here. It's the same layout, six and six, but we want an image on the left this time and the text on the right. So to do that, we'll create a row. So we'll do div class row. And again, I'm going to comment row just to keep us organized. And we'll do div class column medium six and div class column medium six. Okay. So again, we've created a row. And in that row, we've got two columns going. In the first one, we want an image. And that image is in our folder called images, and that's image two. So we'll go image source, and it's in a folder called images, and it's called image two.jpg. We want an alt text, um, people, what is this image of? People writing notes. People writing notes. Okay, so we've got our image on the left. And we've got our text on the right. And I'm just going to copy all of this text from the last row and just copy it again just to make it identical. Obviously, we would change this if we were making an actual website. And we've got our two columns. But again, it's weird because our image is huge and spans way more than the width of its container. So what we can do is, since we've already created a class called full width, we'll just add that class to this image as well. So we don't even have to add any new code in our CSS. We just have to add that class to this particular image. So as you can see, um, the two image are, are um, Layout is looking more like, it's not perfect, but it's looking closer to um, what we got here, right? So we've got two columns here, two columns here, two columns here, and we're looking closer to that. Two columns here, two columns here, and two columns here, okay? So the next thing we'll do is we'll style up our hero. Let's style up our hero section because um, that's really bothering me. Uh, so we've got this hero section um, with this gigantic background image, right? So instead of actually putting the image in our HTML, I am going to use what's called a background image in CSS. So we've got this div up here at the top called hero. And what we'll do is we'll start at the top and we'll go, we'll create a style for hero, right? So the period selects the class and hero is the class name, right? So we're selecting hero and we're going to say we want to add a background image to this, to this div, okay? So that background image will have a URL, which is very similar to our image source here. Um, but it just uses the, uh, the syntax URL in CSS. 
So what we'll do is we'll grab that image. So it's again, it's in the folder images slash hero dot JPG. Okay. Now the other thing, so if we save that, that should make the background image of our div hero, which is back up here. It should make the background image this image that was called hero.jpg. So if we refresh, we see it's there, but it's really, really thin, right? It's really, really thin. Um, so the thing about using background images is what we need to do though, is we need to set the height of this hero section. We need to set the height to something. So I'm gonna set it to, um, and I'm gonna use a unit called viewport height, 100 VH. That means it will be as tall as the entire viewport, regardless of the size of that viewport. So if you see, that's pretty tall, right? So my viewport is right there and we have our background image. And if we make it smaller, the height of that div adjusts to how tall the viewport is, okay? Now, you're probably wondering why is this just like a zoomed in picture of the sky? Well, it's, it's really just zooming in on one section of the image. So what we can do is we can actually position the image and set a size for the image. Um, the background image. So what we can do is we can use a CSS selector called background size and we can use um, a style called cover that will sort of um, crop the image so it fits perfectly into the width and height of your element and we can do background position and this sets an uh, a position on the x-axis and the y-axis. So we'll do, we want it centered on the x-axis and centered on the y-axis. Okay, so we'll do background size cover and background position center center and that will make it look nice. So that's almost perfect, right? Uh, that looks great. Um, the only thing that really kind of is bothering me now is how ginormous this logo is and how this um, how this uh, nav bar is still kind of stacked. So what we can do is we can um, we can do a few things, but we can first of all add a class to our logo. To make it smaller. So right now, again, if you don't do anything with an image, it just will appear on the page as the original dimensions of the image. And so that's not super helpful. So what I'll do is I'll add a class to this image and we'll call it logo. So that's a pretty obvious class name. Um, again, we can call it whatever we want, but we'll call it logo to kind of give us a clue as to what we're styling. So if we want to do image.logo, and we obviously don't want to set the height and width to 100% because that would make the logo gigantic. Um, instead, we're going to use a, um, we'll use a unit called pixels. So we'll set the width of this to 150 pixels and we'll set the height to auto. So that will, by setting the height to auto, what that does is it, um, it allows you to maintain the aspect ratio of the image and um, just set the width of the image. So if we refresh, the logo is way smaller, which is much better. And actually, I probably want it even a little smaller than that. We'll probably go, let's just do 100. Yeah, that looks better. And we'll do that there. Okay. Um, so what we could do is we could use a grid element, um, right? We could say we could have the nav bar span like maybe eight columns and have the, um, the logo span maybe two columns. Um, but there's some disadvantages to that. 
uh, and I don't want to get too far down the rabbit trail, but um, one of the main disadvantages is it, it's difficult to make that, uh, especially your nav bar, um, responsive that way. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little trick um, that Bootstrap has built in. Um, and I'll try my best to explain this, um, but Bootstrap has a class called d-flex, d-flex. Um, and that class puts on uh, whatever the element you're putting that class on, it, it puts a um, CSS style called display flex on that element. And basically what a flex display does is it, by default, turns your elements into columns. It, so by default, it'll turn your parent, the immediate children of the container, so there's two immediate children of this header, our image and our nav, it'll turn it into columns. So right now, it's just two rows, image, nav. If I put, since I'm gonna put display flex on our header, it's going to move this into columns, okay? That does mess up our image for some reason. Um, and it probably doesn't like height auto for some reason, and I don't know why. So I'm just gonna set the height to 100 pixels for now. Okay, that's good for now. I'll have to figure out why. That has something to do with the flex. But you'll notice, What's cool is it just put these two elements next to each other instead of stacked on top of each other, right? So that's kind of what we wanted. Um, and then the other thing we can do is um, Bootstrap has this great class built in um, that allows us to space things out. Um, so if we've got a flex container, this only works if you have this deflex class, we can use what's called uh, the justify content um, CSS selector, and we can do a few things, right? So um, let me just show you some of the different options. So we can do justify content between, and that will put space between our two elements, right? So that's kind of what we want, actually. Um, so it puts automatically calculates the space in between the two elements and moves them on the left and the right. We can also do, if we change this to justify content center, as you would imagine, it would center both of them on the page. We can also do justify content around, and that puts equal space around each of the elements. Um, but for this, for our purposes, I kind of want to do justify content between and that will put space, equal space between the two, okay? Um, so we're getting closer to this. Not quite there, but we're getting closer. Um, the other thing I wanna do before we finish up this video um, is I want to display this in line. Um, right now it's just a bulleted list um, of links and that's not looking so great. So what I want to do is I want to grab my navigation bar and I want to display my list items in line. So to do that, we can call up our navigation bar and we can say all list items inside of my navigation bar we want to display in line. And that'll move them in line instead of block is what they were originally okay um, and then the other thing we can do is we can add some space since these nav items have some space between them we can add some space by using margins so we can do margin right 20 pixels margin left 20 pixels. 
So we can put 40 pixels of space between each of these items. And the reason why I did 20 and 20 on each side is that it's even on each side. And then the last thing I'll do is I will um, try to vertically align these elements, right? So this is sort of aligned at the top, and this is sort of aligned at um, in the middle. And I'd like I'd like my menu elements to be sort of in the middle as well. So what I can do is I can um, go back to my header. And Bootstrap has this great um, this great class built in called Align Items. And if we try Align Item Center, this should center up all of the the uh, align vertically align all the elements into the center of the parent div. So since header is our parent div, this is how tall it is. It's centering all of the elements up. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there, and then we'll continue on to the next, uh, the next video next week. Um, and what we we've got the base of our website done. Um, we've got some major layout happening. Um, we'll continue on next week, and we'll clean it up, uh, do some spacing, do some font sizing, um, add more white space, and it's going to look great. So until next time, we'll see you later.